Hi, I'm Sheila Graves, CEO of Simply Violin and a violin dealer for 30 years. Today I'm going to show you how to change a set of strings on your violin. What's very important to know is that you need to change the strings one at a time. You do not want to take all four strings off at the same time and I cannot stress how important that is. So just keep in mind uh, to replace the strings one at a time. So I'm going to start with the E string. First thing I need to do is take the uh, old E string off. So I just loosen the peg here and take the old string out. Then I get my new E string. And one thing to mention is that E strings are available in two uh, types. They're available with either a loop or a ball end, and then that would be the end that goes into the tailpiece. And this particular string, as you can see, has a ball on it, which is what this particular kind of tailpiece, which is a Whitner tailpiece with the built-in tuners, needs. Uh, the ball end string works best in this tailpiece. Some other types of fine tuners require a loop end string. But just to mention, uh, when you do get strings, make sure you know what you need if you need a ball end or a loop end E string. So I start by putting the string into the tailpiece, just like so. And I am keeping tension on the string. And then I go up to the peg and I want to adjust the peg so that I can see the hole. And I thread the string through the hole. And I want to make sure <clears throat> that I have a little bit of a tail hanging out uh, of the, through the end of the peg. Um, I'd say maybe about an eighth of an inch or so. Then I just simply start winding Oops, my tail just got away from me. I need to push that through a little bit more. There we go. And what I'm wind doing is I'm winding towards the peg head. So I wind, and now that I'm nearly there, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I lubricate both the bridge and the nut where the string goes into, the slot where the string goes into. So I'll start here at the nut, and this is just a pencil, and I basically just color it in. Uh, the lead from the pencil is what does the lubrication. So I lubricate the nut, and then I lubricate the bridge, and if you're wondering what this is, this particular bridge has a parchment or a calf skin glued onto it. What that does is that helps to protect the bridge from the E string, which is so thin that the string can just slice right into the bridge. The whole time I've been doing this, I've been keeping tension on the E string. I'm just going to finish winding it, making sure that it's lined up in the notch in the nut, and in the notch in the bridge, I just wind it, and I put, and I, it's important to know that you push in the peg while you're doing this. The next step, of course, would be to remove the A string. So we'll take that off, get our new A string. And the same process, we get the string into the tailpiece. I'm going to lubricate the bridge and the nut. And it doesn't take much, just a little bit of lead here, just to make sure that the string is going to glide smoothly through the notch. And again, I am keeping tension on the string. Once again, I make sure I can see the hole in the peg. I stick the string in. 
making sure I have a little tail hanging out. And then I start winding towards the peg head. Now I'm to the point to where I want to make sure that the string is at the nut and in the notch in the bridge. Again, keeping tension on the string and pushing in the peg. I've got the A string on. Next step would be to replace the D string. So we take the D string out. Get the new D string. Now this one happens to be a silver wound D string. So it's uh, slightly thicker than the A string, but not much. The silver winding makes the string a little bit thinner than an average D string. And I'm lubricating the bridge, lubricating the nut. And same step as the others, I stick the string into the hole in the peg, making sure I've got a little tail sticking out. And then I start winding towards the peg head. And then, last step of course would be to replace the G string the old string off, get the new string, lubricate the bridge, lubricate the nut, Put the end of the string into the tailpiece. And now with the G-string, I have to actually pull the peg out so that I can line up with the hole. Got my string through, a little bit of a tail hanging out. Wind it, and then start winding toward the peg head. we will need to tune the violin but the other thing now that is very important is to check and make sure that the bridge from all the tuning hasn't pulled its, the top of itself forward so you just take the violin you look at it and in this case my bridge is leaning ever so slightly so I'm going to very carefully with both hands just slightly pull the top of the bridge back very slowly, very gently. I'm going to check it. I want to make sure that the back side of the bridge is straight up and down. The front side actually slants. I'm going to check it on both sides. And then I look at the top just to make sure that it's even straight across, that it's not S-shaped or crooked, making sure that everything's in the right position. And then the last step that I'm going to do is this particular E-string has a little E-string protector, which most of them have. Because this bridge has a parchment or a calfskin glued to it, this little um, bridge protector is not necessary. So I get my knife this is just a very sharp little exacto knife. Any very sharp knife will work. And I'm going to just cut that little E-string protector and remove it from the violin. And then the last thing before tuning the violin is just making sure that the fine tuners are still engaged, but that they're backed off. 
and then I'm ready to tune the violin and it's just that simple. Thank you.